Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. We have a ton to talk about and most of it is going to be about the new Atlanta Falcons head coach. We've talked about it for the last three weeks ad nauseum. They hired Raheem Morris yesterday. We're also going to talk about Rich McKay's role and whether it's really changed. And then we're going to do the end of the week segment of Alex's tip of the hat to the guys that deserve it. But we are going to start off with Raheem Morris. And I want to start off positively, right? Like that that's what I want to start off. So let's look at the positives of this situation. We did talk about Raheem Morris and kind of what he could bring. So let's, so let's go over that again. And the number one positive, and I think Les Les Snead, the Rams general manager, talked about it, is his ability to connect with players, coaches, guys wanting to play for him, coaches wanting to coach with him, and maybe bringing in free agents, having being a more attractive spot to free agents and coaches and stuff like that. Motivationally, all that stuff. That is his number one attribute, bar none. Yeah, I think that, you know, some people might get that confused, a player's coach, uh, where Dan Quinn was a player's coach, but Dan Quinn was never a, a real difference maker when it came to free agency. Arthur Smith had one moment where we were like, oh, wow, this is making a difference. And it was Calais Campbell. If Raheem Morris can kind of deliver on some of those other free agents that not many people think the Falcons have a shot of landing. This hire is going to look a lot better when Falcons fans, when we get to that point in the offseason of free agency. And, you know, Calais Campbell came out and said, the reason why I joined this team, you know, uh, among other reasons, was Arthur Smith and the guy he is and the role he gave me. So I think that, you know, a lot of people, you know, give the connotation of players coach. Uh, a different meaning than it is. Yes, players might love to play with you, but how does it actually impact the roster? Do we need to see, you know, tangible proof that, you know, it is a difference maker, you know, in terms of free agency and the coaching staff. It goes the same way. It goes the same way. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have a, a good examples of seeing this. Obviously, we're going to see how he fills out his staff. We'll, we'll talk about that later in the week or, or next week. Uh, when some of those moves actually come to fruition. But we've talked about the Falcons and the cap space. They can easily have $50 million If they restructure some of their contracts, they can have even more than that. Uh, Arthur, Arthur Blank already said they're going to be one of the more active teams in free agency. There's no doubt that that's going to be the case. So he's going to have the opportunity to play the recruiter role uh, that we that that if you know he's successful in, well, we could have a much better team next year. And, and it could start with the guy that you just mentioned in Calais Campbell, because obviously Calais Campbell still has some gas left in the tank. I know he's going to be damn near 38 years old next year, but I mean, he was one of the most critical pieces of this defense, led the team or tied for the team lead in sacks with six and a half. And he really came on strong. He, he's, he's a, a big part of the Falcons run defense. So he's going to have the opportunity right off rip to convince a guy like Calais Campbell come back. And obviously they're going to have $50 million to spend. So he could convince a lot of good free agency. So we're going to see it very quickly, what he can do and what he can bring to this organization in terms of free agents. Yeah. And to kind of stick on that talking point, uh, you saw how the Falcons players who were currently under contract reacted to the announcement of the Raheem Morris hire. I'm talking the biggest names, our biggest stars, uh, Jesse Bates, Grady Jarrett, Kyle Pitts, Bajan Robinson, everybody who really matters in Atlanta is, is ecstatic over the hire. And that, you know, particularly Grady Jarrett goes a long way in terms of convincing the rest of the locker room, including, uh, you know, uh, free agents like Calais Campbell to be like, hey, stick around. You're going to love Raheem Moore. So I think more, even more than just, you know, actually ex uh, uh, recruiting external externally recruiting and kind of convincing internally is just as important. You know, the buy-in, so to speak, internally is just as important. And when you've got the biggest names on the team, the best players, the highest paid players are already behind them, everybody else is just going to fall in line. And that is very important. Yeah, I think the Grady Jarrett, that's definitely the biggest vote of confidence that you can yes. possibly get in the Falcons locker room. He's been there as long as anybody outside of Jake Matthews. And beyond that, he has worked with Raheem Morris. I mean, Raheem Morris came on a Dan Quinn staff in 2015. They drafted Grady Jarrett in 2015. They spent five seasons together. He was the defensive coordinator for half a season. He was an interim head coach for 11, uh, for 11 seasons. So Grady Jarrett, not only does he have this vote of confidence, it's not just coming from, oh, he heard Jalen Ramsey, he's heard what other people have said about Raheem Morris. It's from actual experience. So him saying, hey, we got the right guy, let's go, yada, yada. That, that That's not just empty calories. 
No, and, and and another positive is what you just mentioned. Uh, he's got experience on both sides of the ball. Obviously, we know about his time in Tampa Bay. He was a head coach there for three seasons, led the Buccaneers to a 10-win season uh, in his second year there, following a 4-12 and finish the year after uh, he was let go. Um, with the Falcons, uh, he was a wide receivers coach. Uh, a pass game coordinator under Kyle Shanahan. So he obviously was kind of nurtured in that Shanahan system, uh, both offensively and defensively, because then he went after he was an interim in Atlanta. He then went out west to Los Angeles and was Sean McVay's defensive coordinator. And I actually told Chase this uh, before we got on here. I think his three years as a defensive coordinator under Sean McVay are more valuable than the three years he spent as head coach in Tampa Bay. Uh, and it just goes to show that kind of versatility in terms of you know knowledge and things like that goes a long way. So that is another positive, that he has experience on offense and defense. Yeah, and I think maybe the biggest positive is what you just said, the fact that he has worked under Sean McVay. And he connections. Has those he has those connections to that coaching tree. I know we talked about Bobby Sloak and he was a very popular head coaching candidate. Well, he's not the only guy that come that that tree is, is still sprouting, right? Yeah. We talked we we met, you mentioned Zach Robinson in an article on the site uh, of a lot of people expect him to be the offensive coordinator in Los Angeles. He's a hot up and coming name and, and if you can bring along those kind cuz that's the listen, that's the biggest hire, right? Out, outside of Raheem Morris, outside of the quarterback position, the next biggest piece, the next bi biggest pillar of this offseason was going to be the offensive coordinator hire unless you got an offensive minded head coach, which is obviously not the direction that they went in. So getting that OC hire right, and he might have a guy right there, which I'm sure that was probably part of the pitch. I mean, yes. I'm sure he told yes. him, hey, we got this guy. This guy's an absolute superstar. He's going to be my OC. Boom, boom. Now you got two of the pillars in place. I'd go as far to practically guarantee it without, you know, I'm just speculating, but I, I absolutely promise that Raheem Morris came into that second meeting with Arthur Blank, Rich McKay, Greg Beatles, and Terry Fontenot, and basically outlined a very, very detailed plan. I'm talking names. I'm talking backup plans to names. And I guarantee you, if Zach Robinson wasn't first, he was absolutely second. And he told them, like, look, this guy's next. If you, you know, you love Kyle Shanahan, I know you loved him. Uh, I know you see all the success that this Shanahan tree is having across the NFL. This guy's next. I'll bring him to Atlanta. He's a quarterback's guy. He'll cultivate whatever quarterback we get. And these are the quarterbacks I think we'll be able to get. I, I think that Raheem Morris was very detailed in his approach to Arthur Blank and gave him tangible names. I, I believe he gave him tangible names, multiple names and said these are our guys the relationships I cultivated under Sean McVay are going to last a lifetime um, and I think that that's important because it's not only the fact that because listen if Zach Robinson per se let's just give an example is as good as everybody says he is uh, he's going to get a head coaching opportunity eventually that's just how this league works you're a great offensive mind you're going to go be a head coach the fact is, is how are you going to replace that offensive mind? And somebody like John Harbaugh, who isn't an offensive guy, has gotten those hires. Right, time and time again, John Harbaugh gets his defensive and offensive coordinators hires so well because he's so well connected. He's so well liked in this league. And I think that that is probably, I would argue, over the players, you know, having relationships with the players, Having relationships in the league and being able to have Sean McVay go trust Raheem Morris, go to Atlanta, go be an offensive coordinator. I think that's more valuable than maybe the players. Yeah, I mean, I think those experiences, I think, you know, you got the experience. He's obviously had experience as a head coach. He's had that experience under Sean McVay. Positive, positive. He's got he, he's going to be he's going to be well liked among Falcons fans rather right. immediately. The biggest question and what we're going to get in in these next segments and the future segments are kind of the task that he has ahead. Because, listen, uh, the, the Falcons fans here, and it's <laughs> understandable, we're tired. We're tired of losing. And, and listen, losing is not going to be tolerated for long. So nope. he's. I want Raheem Morris to – he deserves a fair shake. Yep. Whether he will get that in Atlanta, in Atlanta is an entirely different situation. Because if you go out there and go 6-11 and 11 next year, they're going to be calling for your head – after just one season and if you don't get the quarterback fix which is another thing we're about to talk about coming up after the break it's going to be hard to do with this team 